Hi, this is Jim Wright. In this post builder lesson, we'll create a post processor for a 5 axis machine tool. Our lesson plan will involve creating a 5 axis post processor. We'll discuss the three different types of 5 axis machine tools. And finally, we'll look at independent or dependent rotary axis. When creating a 5-axis post processor, there are several things you need to keep in mind. As with the 4-axis post, we need to understand the axes of rotation, the rotation limits, the axes name, also whether one or more of the axes are contouring or positioning. But there is another requirement. You need to understand whether the axes we're talking about is an independent or dependent axis. There are three types of post processors that you can create inside of Post Builder. One of the styles is a table table machine like we have here. On a table table machine, none of the rotary motion is behind the tool axis. So we have a traditional XYZ three axis milling machine. All of the rotation is provided on the part itself. So in this example we have X being the long longitudinal axis here, Z up and down for the spindle axis, and then Y for the cross slide. And then for the rotary axes, we have a B axis because it rotates around Y. And then we have an A axis that rotates around X if, if A is at zero position. Um, so one of these is the independent axis. In other words, it doesn't matter for the B axis where the A axis is. Wherever it rotates is wherever it rotates to. But the location of the A axis is very much dependent upon the B axis. That's why we call it the dependent axis. The next machine style for 5 axis post processor is the head head machine. In this particular machine, all of the motion is behind the tool. This is a simpler style of machine, generally speaking, to program. The part is bolted down to a fixed table, and then all of the motion is above the part. So it's fairly easy to program a part like this. Um, these aren't quite as common as they used to be. Uh, the, the table table machines and head table machines are becoming much more common these days. On this machine, we do have to worry about the dependent axis and the independent axis. In this case, the A axis is the dependent axis because it depends on the location of the C axis to ultimately move into position. Finally, we have a head table machine. And with the head table machine, there is no dependent axis. Both the B axis and the C axis are independent of each other. They don't require anything to happen to the other to move to a particular position. However, they still have to work in conjunction when you're doing NC programming in 5-axis mode. I will be creating a post for this type of machine. So in scenario one, we will create a new 5-axis post and we will then test that output. Let's get started. This is the part that I've chosen to use as my test part for 5-axis post-processing. It's an um, end piece for a wing spar for an airplane. So to kind of give you an example of how this particular part is programmed, you know, I want to show you first the part. It's roughly symmetrical from front to back, some slight differences, but, but not a lot. And I want to program this as efficiently as possible, so I'll be machining this on a head table machine, and I'll be able to machine the complete part in one setup. I'm using a window frame fixture technique. This green geometry is actually part of the original stock that I will leave in place so that I may have a a window frame to hold the part in after I'm done machining. 
I've made the stock translucent so you can see through it. And the stock is held in a fixture that is mounted to a tombstone table. Finally, as I mentioned, this is the type of machine that I'll be machining this part on. Now, I'm not creating a post processor for this exact machine. I just wanted to show you how the machining process will take place at the machine once I've created the post processor. For this demonstration, I'll be focusing on the finishing operation on the front end of the wing spar tip. So I have this operation that I've already created. I'll show you how it works in verify form. So it's basically just a zig pass going across the front of that smooth surface. On the machine tool, it looks something like this. This is the type of motion that I'm trying to obtain. Time to create the new post. File, New, Metric Post, 5-axis, rotary head and table, I'll choose the Siemens 840D control. Five axis one. Choose OK. First, let's set up the fourth and fifth axis parameters. Rotary axis is normal. Display Machine Tool to indicate which is the fourth and which is the fifth axis. The fourth axis is the head. The plane of rotation is correct, ZX and the word leader is also correct, B. The fifth axis is the table. The plane of rotation for it is the XY plane, also correct, and the word leader is C, also correct. However, the fourth axis, the head, does not have 0 to 360 degree rotation. The maximum is 100 degrees, and the minimum is minus 10. For the fifth axis, 0 to 360 degrees is correct. There are some differences in a 5-axis post than a 3-axis one. Let's take a look at the program and toolpath. Motion. Notice that even with a linear move, there are two lines of code being output. Let's save the post and test it to see what our output looks like. To test this post, I will only use the finish tip operation, post process, 
using my 5-axis 1 post. Choose OK. There's my move to position the B and C axes at the relative proper coordinates. And then from there on we don't see a lot of motion in either the B or the C axis, although there should be some at the very end where we retract. Yeah, we send B home and C home. An excellent way to see if this post is getting the right output would be to compare the output of your post with the uh, output from one of our standard CAN posts that come shipped with NX or CAM Express then you could at least tell if you were on the right path. Back at Post Builder, even though we didn't create a post that required a independent and dependent axis, I want to show you what those options look like. So I'll create a new post processor with a dual rotary tables function using a Fanuc 30i control. The key difference here is understanding which is the independent and which is the dependent axis. Remember you can always click on display the machine tool to understand which is the independent and which is the dependent axis. In this case A is independent and B is dependent. The rest of the setup is exactly the same as a head table machine. To summarize, you learned how to create a 5-axis post processor. You learned about the different types of 5-axis machine tools. And you should also know the difference between an independent or a dependent rotary axis. Thanks for viewing. In our next lesson, we'll take a look at the tilted work plane.